Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So today we've got a couple of questions that popped up in our pregame chat. And, uh, and if we have time, we got a few other things that, that I'd like to play with as well. But the, uh, uh, the questions that came up first were Wei Wu Wei, discuss, uh, rooting, and um, the idea of feel first, then do. So these are three different three different topics. So let's dive into the first one, the Wei Wu Wei idea. So the um, there are two concepts. One is Wu Wei, which literally means not do. So it means just sort of allow, or uh, you're you are. It's more a state of being that which precedes the doing. So getting into a Wu Wei state is one of awareness, presence, but there's a sense of allowing things to happen. Wei Wu Wei is do not do. And that is, we got a, a little uh, dynamic tension going on there between that. And so the best way I can um, can describe the way I described it in, uh, in uh, the Western Gate was that it's, doing based in non-doing. And this kind of ties into the feel first, then do part, which we're going to get to in a bit. But the, uh, so that, that idea is that you want to get into a state of being prior to the doing. And that means that you are moving into a state of awareness, which allows for the motion to come out of your wholeness. So in that state of awareness, which generally we can describe as energetic coherence is one way of, of talking about it, or at least one way of getting at it, but the, uh, the psychological state is one of wholeness. And that is, there is a perception in that state of wholeness that the, there is no division within the system. So any, uh, if you're looking at something and you anything you identify as an object is going to be a wholeness. If you look at a cat, that's a whole cat. If you look at a snowstorm, that's a whole snowstorm. It, you can then break it up and you can say the snowstorm, break it down into a snowflake and say, but it's a whole snowflake. So it's wholenesses within wholenesses within wholenesses. And so that's when you're looking at it from the outside. When you're looking from the inside, that is you are in direct relation with the event. The, the wholeness that I experience as a body mind is different than the wholeness that I perceive in other bodies around me. And that is, there's a psychological state which is characterized by clarity of thought, a enhanced presence, and uh, also a, uh, a heightened functioning. But anytime you look at these things and think about these things, then you've slipped out of the wholeness and you're into, you're into more of a uh, compartmentalized kind of thinking. And that's sort of the way, that's the way of it. So that's whenever you move into wholeness, you move outside of the discriminatory or discriminating thoughts that characterize your rational mind. And the rational mind likes to say, this is not that. And, oh, that kind of looks like this other thing. And, and oh, I can put this in a list of things that I've got that looked like that. And it is, it is able to make up thoughts and systems of thoughts and systems of systems of thoughts, et cetera. And so you're able to like get all that together and, and make so, for a lot of fun stuff. And you can write books and do all kinds of fun things like that. But whenever you're in that, that gap between thoughts, there are no thoughts, at least in the gap. You know, the thoughts pop up every now and then, and you're no longer in that moment of thinking, you're no longer in the gap, but you can quickly get back into it by activating your coherence. 
So in Wei Wu Wei, we move into that state of being that precedes the doing. And it doesn't have to last very long, but it's something that it's, it's, a, it's a reset. It says, I'm going into a state of wholeness. I'm going into this state of being that allows me to then do. And then the, any doing that I, I uh, execute from that state is going to, to probably be more effective than that which is done as a reactive responsive mechanism, which is using the pre-programmed, uh, the presets on my, on my nervous system. If I can then move into that, that state where the mind is clear, then I'm able to access energies and information that are not available to me in my, in my more rational mind state. I'm also, I'm in that super conscious state and I'm able to function at a higher level. I'm able to handle many things simultaneously without thinking. There is a level of awareness that, it, that I consider supersedes rational thought. It's, a, it's the, the thought that uh, it's not, it's beyond thought. It's, it's a state of awareness that is knowing without thinking or doing without, the, I guess, knowing without thinking. And so there is that, uh, we get into a lot of fuzzy language in this and I'm doing the best I can to kind of like make it real to people, but everybody has a sense of just knowing something. And how did you, how do you know that? I was like, I don't know, it's, just, it's obvious, isn't it? You know, it's just, there's a, uh, there's a sense of, of, of that knowing. So the, in that way, wu way, we have that sense of knowing, which then allows us to heighten our perceptions and instantly choose which actions are, we can prioritize our actions, I guess is another way of saying it. We can instantly prioritize actions so that we know exactly what to do. And this is how we get the, you know, the really cool fight scenes from Kung Fu movies and things like that. Those guys are in this super conscious state and they don't have to plan ahead. There's everything just becomes very obvious and it's more a response to the changing energies and also the perceptions of, of intentions and the like that occur from that. So Wei Wu Wei is a state that each one of you has experienced. And, you know, some of you are better able at to uh, go there at will than others, but it's something that is learnable. It is, it's, you can practice it and you can get really good at it. And uh, I think that is the essence of Kung Fu is learning how to do that. You know, Master Yang talks about it all begins in the mystery. So that is, you go to that, that state of emptiness, that, that state of pure being, that, and then from that, the actions come forth. And you don't have to think about them so much as just know them. So, uh, uh, so that is my understanding of Wei Wu Wei. Uh, any questions, any thoughts? Scott, you do uh, that uh, make sense to you? Uh, it makes sense. I guess my I guess uh, my question is my my follow up question is uh, how to practice it. Okay, that's More good. Sp uh, specific. Okay, uh, cool. Let's uh, we'll uh, we will do that. I think it kind of ties in with what Nick was asking about about the. Uh, uh, Feel first, then do. So it uh, will, uh, will, uh, will kind of tie those together, and uh, um, 
and maybe a few notes on on rooting tube and then we'll get, we'll get into some some fun stuff on that so uh, so the uh, bridging from that to the feel first then do feeling is um, conscious feeling is the is the way that I discovered, you know, for myself, uh, is the way to access this this state, this way woo way state, the state of of heightened coherence, the state of wholeness, and uh, and going back over the Young family secret transmissions, the forty chapters, you know, I was seeing that oh oh it was there all along, and you know it maybe had planted a seed when I read it. 30 years ago, but uh, that was it. Uh, I certainly didn't understand it at the time, but the, uh, um, but that, that is that conscious feeling, conscious movement is the way that you develop your Kung Fu, but it's also the path to, they say, spiritual illumination. And so this is how I tie these two together, that, that you can, by accessing consciously accessing the gap between thoughts through the sense of feeling that you can then expand your ability to to practice uh, and to um, uh, exercise your your martial arts skills as you go along so that there's and then the it goes hand in hand with spiritual illumination as you the more you can, tap into the insubstantiality of this state, the more you become aware of your spiritual connection, your, your link to that which is greater. So the feel first, and the, what, what Nick was uh, asking about was, how do you know that it's working? And the, um, you know, the, the important thing I think in this is finding a partner who can give you some honest feedback on it so that you can then demonstrate and feel for yourself how this, you know, how this works. Cause it is very easy for your, your nervous system to get triggered and for you to kind of backslide into a stimulus response reaction to to what's going on which then takes you back into the um, uh, a very crude muscular force rather than going with the gin so being able to having a, a patient partner to um uh to work with will help you to uh to get that make that transition and to be able to override your nervous system override those those responses. So uh, you want to give me a hand with this? So we can I'll give you something to, to practice if you do have a partner that uh, uh, this is this is helpful for that. So um, so, so uh, what I'm going to do is you're going to push me. Okay, I'm going to grab I'm going to grab your wrist, right? And you're going to push. So Maria is going going to push and go ahead. So you're pushing and and nothing's happening, right? So the thing is the using muscle to do that. So in this situation, what Maria wants to do is to actually feel my hand with her wrist. So as soon as she does that, I start to go. It is because she shifted from from Lee, crude muscular force, to Jin. Because if she tries to muscle me, not going to happen. But if she feels first and then, and then executes, there's a shift. When she feels, there is a moment. So just to be, be patient with it, right, right there. So, so notice in this, in this moment, she is in a unified state. This is a state of being that precedes the doing. And then 
after that, the doing is just like the icing on the cake. She's already, she's already done the work by shifting into a different state of being. So that's a push, that's, that's, that's a muscle push and that didn't work. But if she immediately, if she finds that be, that state of feeling first, and the feeling is just a way of tying the whole system together into a unified whole. So each time, and then if you, if you change it up and then you give another, another, uh, another challenge, we got two of them now. And so it becomes, it's still the same, the same answer. You have to feel first and then you do. And so the way to practice this is to find a patient partner who can give you feedback, give you a body and say, okay, you're going to, and let you know if you're, you're just trying to muscle, if there's a strength differential between the two people, it's like, yeah, that's muscle. But you, you can then feel, oh, that you're gonna feel lifted if the person gets it right. So this is a way to check on yourself. If you find, you feel, so there's a feeling, Feel first, then do. Same idea if I'm pushing on Maria and I want to push on her and she wants to say, I'm going to ward me off. She wants to feel my hand. So as I push in, not going to happen, right? So not, oh, no. So you want to feel first, ah, and then, and then she's able to ward off. But the feeling has, this is where, we're challenging the nervous system. We're saying, okay, I'm pushing in and we're making the body mind think that there's a real threat there and that causes things to bunch up. So by, she feels the finger, she feels my hand on her wrist. And as soon as that happens, then she's able to get powerful again. Thank you. Okay, so this is, this is a way to practice that. Another way, to, if you don't have a partner hand and you wanna just get the feeling of it, let me see, how about on this door over here? You just bring your hand on, on a wall, a door, something like that. And you just practice feeling that. And then whenever you empty out and you move into that gap between thoughts, and then you just gradually increase the pressure. And the door is not going anywhere, but it's, uh, but I can feel increase in pressure within the system, but it's done from a state of being rather than a, a, a reactive responsive state. Okay, so uh, uh, did, that, uh, did that work for you, Nick? Good, good. Everybody else, uh, that, that, that makes sense? Valerie. So, um, when you're in that state, that feeling state, and you have let go of being in the nervous system, are you at that moment then in Wei Wu Wei? Probably. You don't actually let go of the nervous system. The nervous system is still going to be hanging yeah. around. Yeah, but, but I mean, it's, it's, letting it it's operating. It's operating in a state of wholeness. Right. So it's operating, you know, and you're not limited to the nervous system. Your connective tissue system is processing information uh, virtually at the speed of light. So it's uh, there's an instantaneous response throughout the whole system when you're in that state of wholeness. So it allows you to do cool stuff that uh, you wouldn't otherwise, stuff that you know, your mind is going to say, yeah, I don't know about that. But if you have a partner who can, who can guide you with that, then you can, you can start to gain more confidence. That makes sense? Cool. So the feeling is just an access door. It's a way of, of creating a body-mind integration that awakens the superconsciousness that awakens the eye of spirit. And suddenly like you're in a different, uh, a whole different uh, operating system at that point. You're in a, in a non-objective 
awareness rather than an object-based reality or object-based consciousness. So it's a different, a different feeling and it's characterized by the clarity of mind, a sense of centeredness and peace and, and, and that kind of thing. Cool. Anybody else? Good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, so, and, and one other question came up was a, uh, about rooting. I'm throwing all these all together, doing all the discussion first, because it's, uh, they're all kind of germane. Because we're talking about really insubstantial stuff here. And I probably should do another talk on insubstantiality and substantiality at some point. But the, uh, the, the insubstantiality is what drives the substantiality. The substantiality is the stuff and the insubstantiality is the non-stuff. And when we're talking about the gap between thoughts, we're talking about non-stuff. We're talking about the absence of thinking. If we're talking about a state of wholeness, the wholeness itself is insubstantial. It, we have to think about the different parts in order to bring it down into the substantial. And so the two work together very nicely, but uh, we have a tendency to shade our perceptions toward the substantial. So this way, you know, we're getting familiar with, with the insubstantiality and getting that going. So rooting is also very insubstantial. So we, uh, the, the question that was asked was, you know, um, yeah, how do we, how do we know that we're being rooted? And um, the, um, the short answer to that is test it just like I did with the, with the other thing, is you have someone pushing on you and you can then, you can sense when you are uh, tensing up and, and trying to brace yourself versus being able to just do it energetically. And so the, the key here is best to be done if you, uh, if you get your structure out of the way, you know, by putting your feet together like this, and then you have, then you have someone push on you. So, want to give me a hand with this one? <laughs> cool. So, uh, so, um, so if I identify with my 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 stuff, my meat, my bones and such, and I try to, if I have my feet together like this, and Maria grabs my wrist and pushes in. And I, I go easily because it's I, I have a very narrow base there, and the force is coming in laterally, and so consequently, there's nothing, the there's not enough there to keep me from falling backward. But if I do exactly what we we're just talking about before, that is feel, and create that state of wholeness, so that she grabs in and pushes in, and then go ahead, push, then it's a different, a different feeling because now I have an energetic connection. It is that insubstantiality that, <laughs> that a lot, what's that? Can I try <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so it's, it's the insubstantiality which makes that happen. The stuff is the same stuff. My legs, my feet, my body, everything's the same, but the, what's changed is the insubstantiality. That is the energetic connection with the earth and the whole body connection to creative, the, creating that state of coherence. So if I do it to Maria, if I push straight back, she's got her feet together and I push straight back and she resists, it's, it's really easy to push because there's a, it's just, I'm pushing on stuff right now. Okay, and there's that stuff and, and so, but if we do exactly what we said before, drop your up, reach, good, so feel my hand. So now if I push in and she's feeling my hand, she has created that state of wholeness and suddenly she's got root. She's got tons of root and it's, there's an insubstantiality there. I push in and <laughs> it's the insubstantiality trumps the substantiality. Great. Thank you. So the, uh, the short answer to do I got root or don't I got root is tested. 
So that's the, uh, but it ties in with those two other things that we we're talking about there as well. Wei Wu Wei and, uh, and feel first then do, yeah. Can I make one comment? Yeah. Um, if you've been doing Tai Chi for a long time, you have a different idea of what rooting feels like. And this feels different than the old idea of what rooting feels like, but it's still rooted, it's actually more rooted. Right. So, but don't be looking for the old familiar feeling of rooting. This is a new rooting. Right. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it's that idea of, of you have to adapt yourself, your, your familiarity to the insubstantial to say that, oh, no, I can, uh, it's the insubstantiality is what enables this thing to work. Think of um, like a, a helium balloon. So the, you have the substantiality is this latex uh, ball, you know, that it is kind of flaccid and then, and then you fill it up with helium, which is much more insubstantial than, than the balloon itself. It is what creates the substantiality out of the, in, in that structure and it's what makes the balloon work. You tie it off and the thing floats away. It's, it, it is that insubstantiality is what makes it, makes it work. Similarly, your root is powered by this energy flow, which is invisible and hard to prove that it's even there, but you can see it by its effects. So again, find a patient partner and, you know, just, monkey around with that and, and allow yourself to explore way, 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 explore, feel first, then do. And then the rooting comes from that. Okay, cool. Any questions, thoughts before we go further? Okay, all good, good. Let's, uh, let's do some stuff. Take a moment. And allow yourself to be in the space you are doing what you're doing, freed from distractions. And feel the floor with your feet. Step out. So, first thing we do is we establish the three pillars. And one of the key things about the three pillars is done correctly, it will create the conditions necessary for way, 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 for rooting, and for the energy to, to flow in a way that allows you to connect up to the big chief. Feel the balls of your feet. Feel the floor through the balls of your feet. Feel the foot kind of melting into the floor, but having the balls of your feet as your focal point. We're gonna cover some familiar territory here, but we're gonna slow it way down just to heighten the awareness of the things we've been talking about. Notice that as you do this, just by feeling the floor with your feet, 
consciously feeling your mind clears. There's a state of awareness there that allows you to notice the gap between thoughts. Now reach with the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Do that and continue to feel the floor with your feet at the same time. Knees are unlocked. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Feel the opposition between the crown of your head and your coccyx. Feel your, sp your spine lengthening. And just be aware of the changes that are occurring inside your body. Notice the increase circulation and the tingling, pulsing. Reach with your elbows, open the shoulder joints. Feel the sensations in your hands, your arms, and your shoulders. Look again and notice that your mind is clear. This is the Wu Wei part. The not do. Reach with the fingers, particularly your index fingers. Reach with your clavicular notch. Feel that lifting upward, opening your shoulders, opening your chest. Feel the emptiness. And as you feel the emptiness in the, in the stuff, feel the fullness in the non-stuff. As paradoxical as that sounds, it's uh, just one way of describing what's going on there. There's a lot of energy happening that is really just a statement of relationship between the parts.
Now feel the balls of your feet. Feel your knees. Feel your hip joints. Release your hip joints and just allow your body just to bow forward ever so slightly. Without rocking back. So you're kind of loading up into the, the balls of your feet. Now feel your fingers. Feel your elbows, set your elbows. Notice just by setting your elbows, your hands start to get even more responsive, feeling even more circulation in your hands. Because you're opening up your the shoulder joints and creating more chi flow. Now feel your wrists. Bend your wrists as they come up. Reaching with the wrists. The elbows stay where they are. And just feel the heaviness of your hands. Feel the heaviness of the wrist. And continue. And now your elbows start to come up a little bit. Your hands, your wrists are at shoulder height. And reach with the fingers. Open the shoulders. Feel the, as you reach forward with the fingers, feel the connection between your shoulder blades. Feel your elbows. And then reach down with your elbows. Feel your wrists. And you bend your wrists as they come down, reaching down with the wrists. Feel first, then do. Feel your hands, feel the chi dam that, that's created there. Feel the pulsing there that's happening. And now reach down with the fingers and straighten up the body. Reach down, open up the arms, the joints. And feel that connection. Notice your, your mental state right now. Go back to Wu Wei, the not do. We're basing our doing in the not doing. We feel that not do, the Wu Wei. Now we start to do. What, how, do we, how do we get there? We feel, feel the balls of the feet. Feel the knees, feel the quad, feel the elbows, feel the fingers. You straighten up, reach with the reach with the wrist, feel that. Reach through the fingers, open, open the shoulders, open the back. The 
down with the elbows. Reach down with the wrists, bend the wrists. Feel the potentiality that's being generated in the not doing. Now you straighten up, reach down with the fingers, open the joints, reach with the crown of the head, feel your shoulders, feel your elbows, feel your wrists, feel your fingers, feel your feet, feel your knees. Follow the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the left. You're loading up the right claw. Feel that, feel you're settling into that right leg. Feel your elbows, feel your fingers. And step in with the left foot. Take a deep breath, reach with your elbows, with your wrists, feel your fingers, feel your arms. Exhale and disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness, into the mystery. See if anybody has any questions or thoughts. Hey, Rick. That's what I wanted to talk about that you lost me. I lost. The computer was reacting the way I was reacting, which is at the start, it was another party. But by the time you got to the end there and everything was open up, I was back in college in the 70s. And we were <laughs> all there just sort of like going, oh man, cool, man, far <laughs> out. It really was something. Just wonderful. everything opened up. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful, beautiful. Cool. Are you signaling to speak there, Jonathan? Okay, you're, 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 you're on mute, so, okay, okay. Uh, no, it's actually okay. just adjusting my screen, but it, it does occur to me when we're in that position, um, there's sort of different ways to send the message about direction, about what we're doing, because the elbows are going one way and the 
and you know the crown's going up and the lower part's going down but it, i just find there's you can experiment with that you know like you know think up out you know but 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 direction not seems to be a big part but there are different directions going on all at once i mean thoughts will come around as you're doing this and so how you talk yourself into what you're doing seems to really matter the language uh and uh i don't know just just this time it it, it seemed holding that idea of up and out and how they as as a chord basically right the elbows are one way and the head it's almost like a chord i guess is what i was thinking uh because a chord holds like you know four or five different notes together a chord, okay yeah a c-h-o-r-d it's yeah, like yeah. we're making a chord, a directional chord when, nice. in, in sustaining this uh, this amazing kind of state we're in. Beautiful, beautiful. That's 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 eloquently put. It is like it is like a chord because uh, a chord is is harmony. It's it's uh, bringing uh, several different things together in a right. way that creates a distinctive sound that is uh, that is unique. And uh, so uh, that is not, there's much more than the sum of its parts. Right, so, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's great, great. Scott, you got something? Um, yeah, there's, um, I find that there's probably, there's, there's no word for this, but um, I find that I have, I, when I'm doing this, I need to, it's like a release, um, it's like a release, a surrender. It's like a re really like releasing the thoughts, and you know, and kind of surrendering and allowing. And it's kind of a mental and a physical thing all at once. And then, like everything, just gets huge. I feel that I, yeah, I don't know if there's a, I don't even know if there's a term for that or, or, <laughs> or even. I, I, I love the way you put it. That, that, that I think that is, uh, you know, there's uh, an eloquence in the ineffability there. That <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so that was that was that was great. And I think so, yes. that's that's when I'm feeling the the, the mystery. I think is when all that when that happens. I think. Right, because it is you're you're talking about. There is a surrender there, because the. You know, the nervous system has worked very hard for many decades to establish a solidified position in your 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 field of awareness. And it's saying, hey, this is how it is, baby. You know, this is reality. You know, th this is how yeah, this is how it goes. And then you're saying, yeah, well, you know what, we're gonna just flip that on its head here. And we're gonna say that up is down and, and right is left, and and your nervous system says, uh, uh wait that's just freaking me out man <laughs> and so you uh, uh so you're right there is a surrender there because we're asking it to do to do something paradoxical and uh, so it's uh it's not real fond of the paradox just yet so it's we're we kind of have to take it along gently and kind of coax it in say yeah it's okay it's okay little buddy come on come on you can do this so yeah, <laughs> so that's great. Cool. Sharon. Okay, I, I have my own type of surrendering during this. Um, going with your guidance, you know, feel with your elbow or feel with your wrist. And it was very hard. It's difficult for me to click into that I'll call kind of guidance or command. But what I was easily able to do was sense what was just outside of the wrist or just outside of the elbow. And I feel as though um, I had a tremendous shift with that. Great. Great. Yeah. You had something? Yeah, I was going to say that when you really go there and you start feeling the insubstantiality uh, without the materiality, it's like you, you become aware of your own beingness. Mm. You, know, you become aware of yourself as a, as a being that's more than just a bunch of uh, molecularly organized particles. Right. 
So that's kind of woo woo there, but it's woo woo. But uh, it's very much what we're talking about there. That's the way woo way. That's the that's uh, coming doing based in non doing or being doing based in in being. So we're getting that into that state of awareness where we're slowing it way down. So Taiji is such a perfect vehicle for exploring this because it you know. Not it's it's encouraged to, <laughs> to move slowly. It's encouraged to to bring your awareness in that that interoception is encouraged, and so it's uh, it's such a wonderful vehicle for that because then you know you don't have to you know do a hundred reps of something in order to make it to make it worthwhile. If you do one rep that lasts you an hour, that's okay. You know, <laughs> it's. Uh, it's a uh, it's a beautiful it's a it's a beautiful vehicle for exploring this insubstantial world that we're that we're talking about here. Jonathan, you have something? Yeah, I just gonna say with uh, Chick Sen Mahai dying right just recently, you just sent me that note on it. That whole sense of flow is so greatly increased by putting the attention to the kinds of details you keep finding to come up with. So if ever Tai Chi feels boring for somebody like, like okay, I, I'm doing it because I need to, you just, you slow it, slowing it down actually makes it more interesting because with all the things that you're showing us to observe, that's sort of like his flow state in, in, in a, you know. Very much so. And one of the characteristics of the flow state, um, you know, Jonathan, if in case you're not familiar, uh, uh, Mihai, Chikshan Mihai is uh, a psychologist who created, who, uh, who named the flow state and and not only that but kind of drew a map on how to get there and said like these are the qualities that are necessary to have a flow state and one of the qualities that sticks out is that the activity is intrinsically interesting or pleasurable for you that just doing it you do it just because you like to do it and and then when you have something like that then there are various other conditions that he he, he, he describes, but that's a, that's where you start. It's like, yeah, I just do it because I like to do it. So when you're doing your Tai Chi and you just, if you just like the feeling of moving your arm really slow and, and, and just the noticing the feelings that are involved with that, noticing the shifts in, in your awareness as you do that, then it's real easy to tap into that flow state which then is its own particular fun state to, to do. You know, it's, um, um, yeah, it, uh, you remember it, in Western Gate, I started that off by, by talking about, you know, being in the flow, being in, in the zone and, and say, is, this, is there something that can help us get there? And uh, so this exploration has been, you know, just that, like, how can we, how can we do this so that it's not just a serendipitous event? Because that's for most athletes, that's what it is. It's like, oh, I was in the zone, man. I don't know how to get back there. I don't, you know, as soon as I thought about it, it left. But, you know, for a while there, I was, you know, I, you know, the baseball was the size of a cantaloupe. The basket was 10 feet wide, you whatever. So you, it's everything just is just is um, it's magical, and you're in that state where the mind opens up, and you're able to process information at this at this super rate. Cool. Anybody else? Uh, Stan. Yes, uh, I just want to explore something over here. You see, I think I have a question. Uh, following your instructions and feeling into those areas, I, I felt the intensity growing. Uh, at the very end, when I'm releasing it, you know, I, in, or I should say, prior to that, while I'm doing it, every once in a while, I, and there's a shift in the legs, you know, like uh, maybe I'm not always on the ball, uh, but it, it shifts once in a while, not a, quite a shaping. But uh, when I'm finishing up and releasing the chi, uh, I seem to notice 
uh, when my feet together are, and I'm coming down, it seems like I'm moving back and forth quite a bit, almost. Like, uh, am I overdoing it at that point or what? Uh, I, I'd have to see you doing it to, to be able to, uh, to help. It doesn't sound like you're doing anything wrong, just, you know. Yeah, exactly. Continue yeah. to play with it. See what, uh, yes. you know, see what, 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 uh, where that takes you. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank cool. you. Because at that point you're just emptying out. So it's, uh, you're, you're allowing your body mind to do its thing at that point. Ah. Oh, okay. And so you're, you're kind of going back into the Wu Wei state, you know, letting go of the way Wu Wei and moving back into the Wu Wei state where you're saying not do. So <laughs> you're, you're just moving into a state of being. Oh, very oh. good. I'll try that. Okay. Thank you all so much. This has been wonderful. Really had a, had a good time. Hey, Keith. Thank hey, you. Keith. You hanging in there, baby? I <laughs> can